the deplorable conduct of Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, which took place at the ABC studios on the occasion of the taping of the Howard Cosell show on January 23rd, demeaned the sport of boxing to such a degree that the New York State Athletic Commission is impelled to take punitive action. The two aforementioned contestants, after an, ex an exchange of recriminations, became involved in a brawl on the floor of the studio to the amazement of all who witnessed the tobacco. Television and the press transmitted the story by word and photographs to millions of viewers and readers. Even if the whole incident was a put on, as many believe, it was severely damaging to the best interests of boxing and to its well-being and to the public interest. To multitudes of youngsters who look upon the sport as one in which sportsmanship plays a part, the actions of these two leading exponents of boxing made a deplorable impression. Not only that, but in the melee, whether real or feigned, one or both of the men could have been injured necessitating the cancellation of the fight. People who came from far places at great expense would have been inconvenienced immeasurably. In view of all the circumstances, it is the unanimous decision of the New York State Athletic Commission members that Muhammad Ali and Joe Fraser be fined $5,000 each. If there is a recurrence of this type of conduct at the weigh-in on Sunday, another similar fine will be imposed. The New York State Athletic Commission is empowered by mandate to levy fines up to $5,000. The fine has the same effect as a judgment, and the commission can hold up the price of the fighters until the fine is paid. That was the Honorable Ed Dooley, Chairman of the New York State Athletic Commission, at a press conference held in New York City yesterday morning announcing the imposition of $5,000 fines against Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier because of a skirmish between the two that took place during the taping of the bulk of today's show at our ABC studios on Wednesday past. Immediately after that announcement, Robert Aram, the attorney for Muhammad Ali, registered heated objections against the imposition of the fine against his client. He said the fines were imposed based upon hearsay evidence only. And indeed, the members of the commission, including Mr. Dooley, admitted that they had not been present at the taping of today's show, and they further added that they had not seen the tape of today's show. I want to make it emphatically clear that upon request by any member of the commission or any representative thereof, ABC Sports would have been happy to have made the tape available for their viewing. Since they did not elect to do so, neither any member of the commission or any representative thereof, we are now able to show you, the viewers, and the members of the New York State Athletic Commission for the first time the taping that took place on Wednesday past. It was March 8, 1971, and by anybody's definition, this was a happening. Everybody who was anybody was there, like Sinatra, like Graziano. The celebrities poured in. Don Klosterman, general manager then of the Baltimore Colts, the Super Bowl champions at the time. David Frost and Diane Carroll. They were an item then. Sure, the place was filled with plain people and fighters like Jimmy Ellis and Woody Allen and Diane Keaton. Smiles were over many of the faces. There were handshakes, and of course, there were utterly beautiful women. But behind the smiles and behind the handshakes, you could feel the atmosphere so heavy with tension it was almost unbearable. In current sport, there was no event to match it. The first time ever, two unbeaten heavyweight champions to meet, Muhammad Ali entering the ring there with his black Muslim entourage behind him. And the crowd reception overall, very warm. But of course, some of the boos, because so much of the controversy that has followed Ali throughout his career, followed him into that ring. So did the anticipation, because Joe Frazier was yet to arrive. Now he comes, led by the late Yancey Durham, then his manager, and Joe himself, somehow looking smallish because of the absence of height comparable to Ali's. 
Johnny Addy, the ring announcer at Ring Center, getting ready to introduce the fighters. of the century with Frazier about to be introduced. His opponent from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he's wearing green trunks. He weighs 205 and a half pounds, undefeated in 26 bouts, scoring 23 knockouts, the heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Frazier. Ali and Frazier are with us today and for the first time at home. You'll see the fight of the century. A lot of them want me whipped because of the draft. A lot of them want me whipped because of religion. A lot of them want me whipped because I'm black. And for other reasons that I might not even know about. <laughs> it's the biggest fight because for the first time you've had a witty, quick, fast-talking heavyweight champ when the most of them asking the question, how do you feel, champ? Die, 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 die. <laughs> That, of course, was Muhammad Ali at his boastful best, promoting a fight that may not really have needed any promotion, but Ali, with that chameleon-type personality of his, with his absolute flair for show business, could never resist building up whatever he was engaged in. And, of course, the two fighters will be joining me momentarily. I'm Howard Cosell. And right now, to lay the scene set, the foundation for the whole show you're about to see today, I'd like to draw the distinction between the two men as types. Having just seen Ali in a typical pose, we want you to see Joe Frazier, the way he really is, and the way he was before that fight. Tense, dedicated, facing the greatest challenge of his life, with a grimness of preparation that, as one looks back at it, seems almost inconceivable. But always, to relax Joe, there is his music, even if it's the gospel. And in watching Joe now, you'll see what I mean. Cousin? That's right. He sure is. <laughs> you think your cousin can whoop me? Uh huh. You really do? Uh huh. Anybody on my? <laughs> Anybody on your one? Anybody in my family? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody on your one? Uh huh. Anybody on your one? 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 Anybody on your but try not to. <laughs> try not to. <laughs> try not to. Joe Frazier ain't gonna give me no trouble. You think he can whoop it? Do I think I can whoop Joe right. Frazier? This might shock and amaze you, but I will retire Joe Frazier. What a contrast between those two men. What a difference of personalities. What a stark, stark difference of approach. I'm going to reveal what will happen to Joe Frazier five minutes before the fight. Listen to me. And I have another thing to tell you. If Joe Frazier whoops Muhammad Ali, I'm going to get on my hands and my knees in Madison Square Garden, right in the rain, and crawl all the way to his corner, look up to him and say, you are the greatest. You are the true champion of the 
world, then we'll crawl back over to my corner just like this. And I'm gonna walk on out of the rain. That's what I think about you. Well, that was almost three years ago, Muhammad. And you lost. You never did crawl across that ring. White people say I lost. And that's some white people. All black people know I won with some sense. Because of my religion, because of my draft police, you say I won. You say I lost. But I know I beat Joe Frazier physically, and more rounds I won. You can't make me in boxing people believe that I lost. This is a racist expression. It's just the less of the two boys, which boy you wanted, that was the boy you picked. And that's why you didn't crawl on So I'm not, I didn't lose the fight. I know I didn't take no whooping at all. I got hit a couple of times, lost a couple of rounds. Well, Joe Frazier took a whooping so bad until Frank Sinatra, Burke Lancaster, and Pete Don Dunphy was at ringside commenting on how can that man take such a whooping. So that's a racist expression. Mm -hmm. You white bigots, or whoever is a bigot, thought I lost. I won the fight. So you don't make me think I lost the fight. All right, we're going to let the public at home see that fight now, now you're today now you're for talking. the first time. But first, Joe, you've been through this many times. You're a retort, if you will, to Muhammad. Well, the way I feel about the fight, uh, I felt like I won the fight, and uh, I felt it was fair and square. I didn't feel like any uh, white man or any black man was up on my side because uh, any racial thing. I feel like uh, they see the fight that I wanted, so therefore they score it that way. That's the way it was. And, one, uh, one, one man gave him 11 <clears throat> rounds. And I think when you have three judges on something so crucial, and for one to be so off, that's bad right there. It ain't no way in this whole God's planet Earth that a non-fight fan can watch that fight say Muhammad Ali lost 11 rounds and only won four. That's outrageous. All right. That speaks itself. You've laid a very good foundation for the viewers now to see this fight and make their own judgments. And we're going to begin, of course, at the very top. Feel free at any time to make any comment either of you wants. Let's go. You think you're in as good condition now, Muhammad, as you were then? What you see now is, was half the condition I'm in now. I'm in double. I'll be going 210 tonight. I'll meet Joe this time, not 215. And the footwork that you see now, I'll be a little faster. But I was off four years, and I couldn't afford to keep this up for 15 rounds. So Joe can take a lot, and he keeps coming. And he was at his best. He was watching the Joe Frazier that would have whooped uh, um, George Foreman. You're watching a Joe Frazier that would have whooped, uh, stopped Joe Bugner in two rounds. You're watching Joe Frazier that would have annihilated the Terry Daniels, annihilated the Ron Stander. But this fight, as you see later, I think took it all out. Uh, Joe Frazier, who whipped him? <laughs> so all that combined, one time. This guy had all the time in the world to get himself together. But I was off some four years, Howard, and I didn't have the time to go like I wanted to. One thing I like to say, I clown too much in the fight. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not crying about who won the fight makes no difference. In a few nights, we're going to settle it. But uh, there's nothing to cry about. I didn't protest after the fight. I just made a few comments on what I thought I won. But I will say that I'm serious this time. No plan, no clowning. So standing right there like you see now, and this will not end, be, this will not happen one time in the next fight. Well, never, never will I be cornered in the ropes again. Never will I play again and clown like I did here. And through the fight, I'm doing just too much clowning. I'm talking and clowning and not doing like I should. I learned a great lesson in that fight, and it's good. It's just what I needed. Same with the first Norton fight. I went and got in shape for it and whooped it. We've got about 35 seconds left in the first round. What was your thinking at this point, Joe? Just when he got hit with all those left hooks and body shots, I guess he was clowning, you know, as time go on. I can't see a man on the clowning, he's jabbing, he's 
He's doing it all his know-how. You'll see uh, later in the film where I can clowning. see where he's clowning. He clowned when you got hit. All right, men, we're coming up to the end of the first round. We've got about 10 seconds left. Then, after a commercial break, we'll proceed with the second round. Round two, gentlemen. Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali are with me here in the studio watching the fight just as you are. You'll be hearing their comments. Referee Arthur McCanny gave the first round to Ali, so did Judge Artie Idala, but Judge Bill Reck gave the first round to Frazier. After the first round, Muhammad, as you were back in your corner, you waved with a kind of disdain in Joe's direction. Do you regret doing that now? Waved? Well, you went like. Oh, I, I don't you know, regret it. I, won't, I don't regret it, but I won't do it again. That's not, my, the whole attitude was bad. Attitude means a lot in life, and not the proper attitude. I like to say something that never was uh, publicized. I don't think. I couldn't get out of Madison Square Garden. I was trapped in the garden all day. I slept on a cot. This time I'll sleep in a private apartment in a nice bed because the wind is the day before the fight and I don't have to worry about it. Why you couldn't get out? Without too many people outside. They wouldn't let me out. Too many fans. Still my fans, Joe. Even after you won, they were still my fans. Right. You know that everywhere still you go. Fans. Everywhere you go, you don't, they don't go for that, Joe. They don't go for what? You. That's for you, man. I know they don't. That's your belief. That's your belief about life. The you know what I mean? You trying to speak for everybody. You only you can speak for yourself. You man. The prisons, That's all man. you going to speak for. You catch it in I've been shops, to prince. I've you been you to many prisons before. Wherever you I go, spoke Joe. to the guy. They don't like <laughs> you, Joe. All right, man. Let's let the viewers watch. You got too many white fans, Joe. That's why they don't like mm -hmm. you. That's where I was made up with a variety of people. You just got too many white followers. They don't yeah. like it for that. Yeah, they figure you must be a good boy. Yeah, a good boy. But you're getting a good whipping next We're going to find out. You better You're getting be a good there. whipping, Joe. We're going to find out. I want you, Joe. I want you bad, too, man. All right, gentlemen, let's I'm look at this you, fight huh, and talk about it. I'm going to box you, Joe. Too much talk between you, gentlemen. I'm going to dance, Joe. Dance. Four squares ain't big enough for you. Well, Joe, you've been in good shape. You might get me. They ain't, they ain't big enough for you to dance. Out of my reach. So do big than you did with the mother force yeah. you been fighting right now. I want to remind both of you guys that the viewers have never seen this fight. Oh, they look at them. Look at it. They look at it. <laughs> they see what they see what, what's happening to him out there. Yeah. We've got about 10 seconds left in the room. And of course, we'll be coming up with round three. I after think his whole. I think his whole. The bell for round three in what was called the fight and called by some the fight of the century. Ali against Frazier. Ali in the red trunks with the tassels. Frazier in the white trunks. At the end of two rounds. Referee Arthur McCanny had scored it two rounds to none for Ali, so did Judge Artie Idala. Judge Bill Rex scored it one round apiece. Now in the third round, with the action underway, Frazier appears to be taking a more aggressive role than he had in the prior two rounds. Fighters, of course, are with me in the studio to lend their comments. And a reminder, gentlemen, viewers at home are seeing this fight for the first time. So if you will, I wish you'd concentrate on this fight and forego the badinage that has existed between you in the prior two rounds. Howard, I think this is the biggest and the greatest sport event that you will ever have on your show. You'll never have another of this good. I mean, how many football games you show, how many car races, ice hockey, whatever you do, you'll never have another event this great. I'll admit that it was a classic night. 
I'm not saying what you admit. I said, you'll never have another show this great on your show. On your show. pretty good shots in in the early rounds, you know, because I probably was putting too much pressure on him at that time and really wasn't uh, really watching out what I was doing. But uh, I feel like uh, coming Monday night, there'll be a different kind of pressure because I've been really working on that. I have to say, uh, I really hope that uh, they'll try to keep him up off the back a little more. See, on the dance, I don't see how you're going to be dancing. He's all on the man back, got caught with a left foot back. Yeah, you caught him with a good left hook, man. I think we'll slow-mo that at the end of this round. Take yeah. another look at it and let I'll Ali say explain. this. I'll say this. If Joe's in much better shape than he was that night, I am in trouble. If he's much better or any better. All right, let's look at this I'm in, in slow-mo, the round having ended, Muhammad. If he gets that good again, I'm in trouble. How come your right was down and that left got in so I don't know. He can't I mean, carry hands no higher than that. The only time he really can carry his hand the high is when he pins on the rope. He can't carry his hand high out in the middle of the ring. We got if you watch him, he can't do it. We got a lot of fuss, but you can't back up either. <laughs> My plan on backing up. All I got to do is push you. Well, that was the replay of the action at the end of round three. And we'll be back with round four, gentlemen, in just one moment. <laughs> round four, the first Ali Frazier fight. I want to say somehow in Joe's favor, something I've never said in the public before. Promoting the fight, you know I'm a good promoter and I do a lot of acting. And I try to back up what I say, but I act, put emphasis on a lot of things I say. I don't really mean them that way. But the man is great. The man took everything that I threw, and I just can't see how he took it. But the man, he kept coming, and he it's hit really hard. It's, it's, and if he's in much better shape than this, it, uh, I admit, I'm in for some night. I'll tell you this on there. If Joe Frazier comes in, in, he's got to be in better shape than this. If he's better than he, I mean, not this the same way, because I'm in much better shape than I was that night. But if I've been had 132 rounds of fighting since then, I'd be down about 210, five pounds right. I'd be moving. All right, that's the other fight again. But you are in pretty no, good shape for this fight. Pretty good shape. Least. Pretty good. My legs wasn't how I, I really. I was, well, you're on your toes there, Muhammad. No, after about uh, after about uh, you'll see later in the fight. I don't hardly move at all. But 15 rounds is a lot of fighting for lightweights, Howard. And this fight will go down in history as the greatest heavyweight title fight in the history of all fighting. And you can get films of any other fight. You'll never see this many punches thrown and landed and no heavyweight fight in the history of boxing. Now, that speed or that pace. But, uh... Joe, you know, he just connected with a combination there against your head. Your eyes were already right. at that point beginning to puff. Were you at... A concern. I would say point. that's, uh, I would say probably much earlier for uh, puffing, and I don't really uh, like puff easy, but uh, I didn't think I was in trouble at all. I, I feel like in this fight, I was more concentrating and staying close to him, you know what I mean? And work. But I don't have to worry about that now. I know I can stay close to him. I know I can cut him off, you know? I just have to watch the shots I land and make sure that they land on target at the right time. That's the important thing. Although this was only the fourth round, did you already feel secure that you can handle it? There was no problem uh, at all, because every time I go back to my corner, I would ask uh, Lancey and Eddie uh, how are things going and uh, what to do, and we would uh, mm -hmm. work it out as long go around.
Ali against Frazier, March 8th, 1971. Fifth round, as you've heard. The scoring at this point, Arthur McCanny has it two and two. So does Judge Artie Idala. Judge Bill Recht has it three one, Frazier. Muhammad, how do you feel your scoring at this point? One thing, you can't hardly see the punches and you can't feel them. But see, he just caught me two body punches, but if you just look at it, it looks like two natural moves. With a lot of jabs I'm throwing, you can't really tell they're connected. See? You count the one that missed? Show that one. Show that one. Too Some out. black film producer named Bill Greaves. He mm, took yes. the, he took the uh, movie. Right. I think they counted me hitting Joe. They must um, see some of your people. I hit Joe 900. Some of your boys. I hit Joe 900. And That's probably what I got on that video. Sometimes that Tom called him and uh, he was talking about how much uh, 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 I know one thing. Guy, All uh, of you people watching this show, look at Joe Frazier's head now. <laughs> But, but watching real which one are you talking about? Because after <laughs> what did you say there, Joe? What was that? You didn't have nothing. That's what you told him. You ain't got no points. <laughs> you, uh, uh, Joe, like like everybody else, I would call. You know, it won't be no more Joe Frazier after his next fight. Be That's the way I feel about you. All right, we'll see. Same old way. We'll see. No hard feelings after the fight. We no, just, no. We just do our best, and that's it. Right on. Well, you know what I'm so glad about? You be going after I'm this. I'm so glad about we got the same God. You know that? Same what? Same God. The same God? Yeah. He says the same man. Mm. Well, I don't know who you said. Mm -hmm. Who you said? Well, we talking about the fight now. Yeah. <laughs> All these punches, like 10 of them just landed. This is the fifth round. Up to this point, how many rounds do you think you won, Mohammed? Every one. Every one. What do you think you won in the first five rounds? I would say three of them. See, the main thing about it, I hate to call a lot of things up in this fight because he'd be really looking for it. What I will say, His I like His arm's it. too heavy, for one thing. When he throw them jabs a lot, he can't keep them up. That's what I, what I say, Joe, I mean, uh, how it is this. The fight was a good fight. It's a debate over who won. That's what makes the second fight a good fight. Some say Joe won, some say I won. So this makes it good. We're coming up to the end of the round. Now watch this. Now, Joe. What was that move on your part? What are you what agitating that? about? You always <laughs> agitate. The same thing what he was trying to tell me. Uh -huh. We both clown. We both clown. That's what you said to We both clown, but I clown the most and it was wrong. That's what now, it my, my, I don't think he's going to clown no more, neither, nor am I. We both lost too much. All right. We'll, ex we'll expect gentlemanly behavior. Let's begin here with round six. Well, you said you couldn't keep on your toes in the later rounds, Muhammad. Analyze yourself here. Well, I imagine I could have, but I didn't want to. I was too tired. Have you begun to tire here? Well, right. Right now, I'm not doing no dancing, Harlow. Stand on the ropes and just stand right there, waiting for hooks. That's bad. I should be moving. As a reset for our viewers, we're in the sixth round of the fight of the century, March 8, 1971. Frazier against Ali for the heavyweight championship of the world. You're seeing it for the first time I ever. I shouldn't have been doing that. Home you tell watch it right now. That's me. Just holding my hand out like that. You know. Gestures like it's bad. You thought what was best. As you can readily detect, the two fighters are with us here in the studio watching the bout along with you. You know, I really enjoyed it. I thought I wasn't going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? He thought he would feel what it would happen. No, it really would uh, give me uh, a lot of inspiration. I feel good. I was off today. And matter of fact, that uh, this helped me get keyed up better. Really good. All I have to say, Joe, if you come to the ring Monday night, I'll be there. Looking like this, I'm uh, I'll not be like there. that. You gotta look better than that. I'll be there. You gotta be better than this to meet Muhammad Ali now. 
Berlin is better than that. His eyes whooping me there and I wasn't dancing. Mm. Well, we're in round six, as I said, Muhammad. And do you feel you're fighting as effectively in this round as you did in the prior ones? Yeah. Won't you admit there's a fall off here? I don't know, how. You've never boxed and you don't have no muscles or nothing. How do you know about this? <laughs> you know so much about boxing. You know so much about football. You're just a genius. Never had no physical contact with nothing in your life. this business against the ropes? No, no. Like, sure was that do. clowning or was it fatigue? Clowning? I'm not that fatigued yet. Slow down. You were slowed down by them body shots. Well, I hope you think so, Jim. Body shots slowed him down. I see his plan touching, just touching it like that. That's, that's just clowning. That's bad. What else you I learned do? my lesson, Howard. I what think everybody watching the watch body, show. When the, when the, All the, young what's... men watching this show, whether you be football players, basketball players, boxers. Let's talk about the when fight. You make a mistake, talk right. Right. When, when you make a mistake, try to drag in the young man. Gentlemen, the round no, is about, about to fight. End. That's what you're talking about. About your condition and why you slow down. Let's face it. You see, you try to brush that stuff over on somebody's elbow. Man. You try to put that weight on everybody else besides yourself. Yeah, boy. Yeah, Roy. <laughs> okay, we'll be back with round seven in a moment. Most of these ABC stations. The shop suits got on them. Pretty good. How old is it? About a year. <laughs> About a year. I heard I was gonna be on the TV with this attorney, so I had to dress like a lawyer. Oh yeah, well I thought it was a sports thing. I would come relaxing. I think that uh, you look good, a relaxing Joe. thing, you know. You don't explain why you dress like you are. Well, you that's good. good. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm a dresser. You look you good, believe. Joe. You I feel look. good too. That's where I feel like I should dress for this kind of show, sportswear. You yeah. know. Round seven. You heard the bell. Frazier against Dolly. Two fighters with us here in the studio as you're watching the fight for the first time ever on home television. Arthur McCanny, of course, was the referee. Who did have you ahead going into the 11th round, by the way. Well, this fight just been 12. Maybe I win this one, because one after the extra three. Joe, at this point, what was your feeling? Do you recollect? Well, for sure, I've been, I'd say I would think I was a little tired, driving hard at him, you know, just real hard. I would say I really was forcing the fight, throwing a lot of punches. Uh, he was holding and uh, leaning on me and doing all these things. I had to get away from it. I had to work twice as hard as him in the whole entire fight. That's what he was doing. I had to snatch away. He put his weight all over me, you know, things like that. that I'd feel like... <coughs> I'm hoping that this one happen again. I don't think it would anyway, because he said he's going to dance. 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 All night long. Howard, what were you thinking at this moment? Watching you, I was beginning to wonder if you were at that time showing signs of fatigue. You had been away three and a half years. I was impressed with your, uh, your fighting in the early rounds. And as we get to the ninth and 10th rounds, I thought you had very good rounds, but this is the seventh round. And I thought Joe was coming on. Here he is. Keep watching, see? You see the, the confidence about it, Howard. I felt like I was coming on when the bell rang when he first began. That's why I keep coming, because I thought I was really doing good. There's no discouraging my heart at all in the whole entire fight that he was ahead. Well, he's, up, he's uppercut and missing, right hand and jab. But he was getting it to the head, Jack. Mm. Some of the shots land, of course. But what those shots? Body, head. What was that you just said? Clowning, doing things I shouldn't have done. I, I got just what I needed. Losing the decision is just what I needed. I had no business. <laughs> 
and you're too great of a fighter to be playing and talking all, and, talking all, and holding on. All like saying you I shouldn't be about it. too many people out there pulling for me. I let them all down. All I say is that I won't clown this time, and I will make up for everything that you see wrong here. And they ain't going to come in and give you no hand. Well, we'll see. Well, That's for sure. You're in the corner there, we'll and see. Joe is pummeling away as the round comes That's the just best. about That's to its end. That's a good Joe Frazier. You can't do no more than he's doing. That's the good Joe Frazier you watch. We ain't like that no more. Okay. That was the end of round seven, gentlemen, and we'll be back again in just a moment. You can't do that no we more. We're going to buy him a ticket out of the country. <laughs> oh, boy. Round eight is about to begin, and the crowd is chanting for Muhammad Ali. Now, you had to be aware of this, Joe. I wonder what effect it had on you. I feel like the people were just, <clears throat> just laughing uh, enjoying themselves. They really were enjoying the whipping I was putting on him. So they would just cheer about it and watch him up there talking about, yeah, right on, right on, right on. And this nigga was getting whipped to death. I mean, the uh, trigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a couple of good lefts, man. I mean, three is not Yeah, why yeah. are you telling me that, though? No, you, you keep watching. I wish we could get you in the ring, how we'll sell me and Joe Frazier. And give you a good whooping. I dance around the two of y'all. Me and Joe Frazier should, should unite just to get you. After we fight, we'll be back brothers, but we should get together to whoop you. This is round eight. And there you are, Muhammad. Dead against the ropes, no effort to get out. Yeah. Oh, what, what is this? You're telling me this is clowning, uh, or is it fatigue, or is uh, it an effort to get Joe to punch you, himself out? You, what? See me, you see me hitting him with 99 light punches, and I should have been punching off for real, playing with him. Fatigue, I'm not so fatigued, I can't move. See that? See them punches I was touching his face with, showing how easy I can hit him, clowning? That's clowning. <laughs> He's just hooking and throwing everything. I shouldn't do that. Next time I get off the road, keep him after me, keep him boxing. All them TNT is falling directly in target. Okay. But we got to get Howard Cosell next time. We got to unite his brothers to get this. We can't let this white man get us to arguing all the time. We got to get him. We can't fall for that in this late day. Come on back. I'll be there. Yep. I'm right at it. What is that? What was that, Muhammad? I'm talking about this man dividing us, and you talking about me saying, come I'm on. I'm talking back. about this fight. What was that business? Uh, I told you I was clowning. Didn't I tell you at the beginning of the show I made a lot of mistakes in the fight? This fight when it was wrong. I got my <laughs> lesson. Didn't I tell you that at first? Hey, this is big fun. Get on back in there, Joe. Well, Joe's a good man. Mm. You can call me boy all the time. I said Roy. Get up in there. Step to the left. Come on. Oh, I see you on You can hit the hand out the way. I tell you something, Howard. Ain't it strange that this fight is watched by probably 50 times more people than Joe's title fight with uh, George Foreman? You talking about this fight, then? Right? Yep. Uh. <clears throat> We've only got about 10 seconds mm -hmm. left in this the eighth round. After eight rounds, referee McCanny had it four rounds apiece. The two judges had it six rounds to two in favor of Joe Frazier. Thus, at this point, a sharp division of opinion. Round nine coming up. Round nine. During the first eight rounds in the early going, as you have seen, Muhammad used the left effectively. Joe seemed to be coming on. From the fourth on, Joe felt he won three of the first five rounds, and Muhammad said he won all of the first five rounds. What do you say, Cosell? At this moment, I'd like you to concentrate, and Joe, on what you're seeing now. And make your points to the fans about these ninth and tenth rounds. I think the fans would like to know how up to this point, who you think you are. I thought after the tenth round, as I said earlier, you were ahead. And I thought Joe took over the fight. Joe, don't agree with you, Howard. What do you say about that, Joe? I'm the quiet type. Let's get the job done, that's all. 
Uh, Howard, Joe don't agree with you. What do you say, Howard? He's entitled. Let me do some agitating for change. Now, I want you to watch this round the next round closely, Joe, and tell me what you felt was happening here, because I thought these were good rounds for Ali. Well, I, I felt like he, he's still missing a lot of shots. You know, I make him miss a lot. And when a man misses a lot of shots, he takes a lot out of him. I want to say one thing his, before uh, I come up. Cut. His jab wasn't landing on target. He missed an awful lot of good shots. And that's what really what wore, wore him down, seeing that. That's something I'm going to say to you, Howard. Later on, I know you're going to play up the knockdown. And I was stunned, I think, in the 11th. I want to say that the science and the greatness about what you see, even in this, in the, in the punishment I was taking, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson got knocked down, uh, Max Mellon, Joe Lewis, Jersey Joe Walcott, Ezra Charles, all of them got tagged. I just got tagged there. But what happens is, can you recuperate? Can you keep him from stopping you? We're going to get hurt. It's the game. So I don't think it's a sin that I got knocked down. It's a sin that I'm getting hit now. But the thing is, can you recuperate? Are you finished? Some fighters, as soon as you tag him, it's all over. When Joe fought George Foreman, he kept coming back into the punches. If he had moved and tied him up, he, I think he would have last longer. Floyd Patterson gets up and walked back into punches. See, so you notice how I retreat. Notice the science and how I get away from this pressure. I want you to notice that. This is when I thought he was getting a huge job. Mm -hmm. You mean you just now very, seen him get a huge job? You had to wait, land. Land good you had to, wait to see this? And on target. We're approaching the end of round nine. We've got only five seconds left. I think a couple of shot that uh, stunned me. Just a couple. There. Remember a couple of the whole fight. Just a couple. Well, that was the ninth round. And coming up, Joe and Muhammad, is the tenth round. We'll be back in just a moment. The start of round 10. Round 10. Frazier against Dolly. One billion watchers waiting for this fight. I think we deserve a hand. We've done a lot of work to accumulate one billion, which is bigger than the Super Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the Kentucky Derby, the Indianapolis All right, Monday, but let's get And the World the Series. Them two men you watching right there beats everything America ever produced. Two black brothers. All right, what was your feeling at this point? Oh, get on off of that mess. I'm talking about something now. I said, them two black men right there can command more world attention than everything America can produce. Now, let me finish talking. I want you to get back to the fight and Cold tell me what your Earth. feeling was at this point. I don't, how am I going to remember? I was tired. You were tired. My hips were sore. He hit me below my, not below my belt, but not the, but in the side, my the right line here. He hit me right here all night. My legs were sore. The referee didn't say nothing. I got hit 90,000 well, times. That's, so that's, when he, that's when he went in the hospital now. Don't, please, Joe, don't talk about no hospital. You know you're wrong bringing up a hospital. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say about no hospital. <laughs> we don't want to mention. I went to hospital for 10 minutes. You went for a month. Now be quiet. I was resting. Oh, yeah, you went to hospital arrest. In and out. That's embarrassing. Don't nobody in go to hospital arrest. Well, why did you bring? I wasn't going to bring up the hospital. That shows you how, how dumb you are. How come people don't go in the hospital arrest? That shows how dumb you are. How come people he don't go He brought up the hospital. Who don't go in the hospital What's this? What was happening there, Joe? I go to hospital for Promotion 10 minutes. Promotion to Arthur McCann. He go for a month. Why did he bring that up? What was happening? I really don't know. He didn't have to I'm tell trying to listen to this. Man, this cat's saying about something. He's going to bring up the hospital. So what the difference? Man why'd you bring why up the hospital? I went to the hospital for five minutes. Why you think I'm equal? I went to the hospital for five minutes. Why you think I'm equal? Man, you know, you sit down. Yeah. Sit down, down, man. Uh, sit down, Joe. Yeah. Why you think I'm equal? Sit down, Joe. Huh? Sit down quick. Why you think I'm equal? So the brothers you, are here. You this too? No. Uh, sit down uh, quick, Joe. <laughs> Well, we're having a scene, as you can see, and it's hard to tell whether it's clowning or for real between the two fighters. This kind of thing has been going on all along in terms of promotion of the fight, and this time it seems to be for real, because Joe Frazier is really angry. Muhammad called him ignorant, and he's really angry. I don't think this one is clowning at all. It's a bad and an ugly scene, and it's unfortunate, I think, that it's happened in the middle of showing a classic fight between two extraordinary athletes. I think that Ali is probably clowning, but there is no question.
question in my mind that Joe Frazier is not clown. They threw off their respective earpieces, microphones. Joe Frazier's watch came off. There was a wrestling bout on the floor. And we're really very sorry this happened. And there's no question about it. Joe Frazier is leaving the studio now, and he is deeply upset at Ali calling him ignorant. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry, night, but we're going to try and get this there. back, and we'll be back in just one moment. Monday night, you be on time. As you can see, one chair is now empty. Muhammad Ali is sitting next to me where Joe Frazier had been sitting, and Joe has left the studio in what was open anger, real anger, and there's no sense in disguising the fact. I would say there was anger on his part, Howard. I'm not angry and still not angry. That's why I'm still here. All right. But a man shouldn't be that savage and illiterate to just jump up and stand over me and ball his fist up and as if though he's on a swing in me. I didn't know what he was gonna do. I had to jump up to defend myself, but I'm not still angry at him. I don't think two black men should be on the television fussing and fighting and acting like savages. This man is, uh, he speaks ignorant at times. He said, I, w I went to the hospital. I went to the hospital to have my swollen jaw checked to make sure nothing had happened for 10 minutes. And I, don't, I wasn't gonna bring up him going to the hospital because it's true. He was so hurt, he went to the hospital for one month and I don't think it would be a man for me to bring up you went to the hospital because it's not, right. not my intention to hurt nobody. But, so, this is why I say he's an ignorant man to, even, to show you how much he thinks. If I, if, I, if I went to the hospital one month and he went for 10 minutes, I wouldn't say he went to the hospital because he might say I went to the hospital. All right, you've had your say now. I want to recapture the situation for you viewers. We were showing round 10 when suddenly this difficult situation arose. Joe is not here. Muhammad, as I have noted, has just had his say. I am going to try and serve as devil's advocate to represent Joe here now because he's not here. You have to be the devil and to you represent can, Joe. You, you have can, to be the devil. I never mind the wisecracks, Muhammad. That's true. We're going to show round 10 again. You We're going to concentrate devil. You on use this the word fight. Devil. And so then you act the devil. Let's limit our attention to this fight and let's be absolutely fair in the absence of Joe Frazier. He's entitled to that regardless of your opinion, and I'm going to do my best to see that he's protected. This is round 10. Now, let's talk about the fight. In fact, round 10 may have been your best round in this fight, if you remember. Well, that's what you say. You have your opinion. That's why this is a race fight. All those two black men is a race fight. Whites got their opinion, and blacks got their opinion. So you pick who you want. <laughs> Monday night will settle all this mess. One Monday night, this will be all over. What was Frazier saying I don't know what he was saying. I'm not even thinking about what he was saying. I cannot remember what he was saying. I think a man's ignorant to jump up on a television show unrehearsed, unannounced, and pull his mic off. You can defend him all you want. He had no right to jump up and tear the mic, mic off of him and pull the earphone out and stand over me, a man of my caliber and ranking, with his bluffing me like I'm gonna sit there and be frightened. He made the first move and I'm just taught to defend myself when attacked. And a man that ignorant might do anything. All right, right there, again, there was a complaint from Joe to Arthur McCann. You recollect what that was? No, I don't. I said a man that ignorant jumping up in my face on nationwide he TV jumped up might do anything. He jumped up because you called him ignorant. He felt affronted by it. He didn't want to be embarrassed or humiliated by you. That's his side. Well, he was embarrassed. And he the was, public he will, have, himself. He public himself. will himself. have seen the incident and they'll judge for themselves. Well, right? we, we, uh, we both can be the judge of each other Monday night. That's true. Once again, this is the 10th round, as you said. Ali against Frazier, March 8, 1971. After nine rounds, the scoring went like this. The referee, Arthur McCann, he had it 5-4, favor Ali. The two judges had it 6-3, favor Frazier. Thus, the sharp division of opinion continued.
Rams almost held them a moment. This whole fight was all in my part. This is round 11, and as the last round ended, Muhammad said that the whole fight was wrong for him. What did you mean by that? That was a slip, of course. My whole attitude, Howard, not, not being serious, starting out in the fight, playing and joking and patting him on the head and standing in the corners and talking to him, clowning, landing the ropes, and just the whole idea, the whole thing of the tassels I got on my shoes is bad. I've never worn tassels before. The red trunks are wrong. Well, why did you trunks. do it? Well, I just off. I've been off now for was off three and a half years almost. Lost contact with my fans. Forgot the value of what I had and lost and just wasn't nothing right. I'm back now. I've been active three years. I lost to Norton. I learned how good it can be when you train right. Came back and beat Norton. So my everything served as a purpose to be really ready for this fight and have no excuses. All right, it's in this round, and I want the fans to watch closely that he tags you and stuns you with a left hook. I told you earlier that was going to come up, and I knew you would play it up, but the science in this is how I can be unconscious just about on my feet and still have the ability and the speed and to be blessed enough by Allah God to come out of this thing. The difference in a quality racehorse, our champion fighter, is when he's under pressure, he can come through. Now I'm talking now. I don't know what I was saying, but it's, it's just a wrong out, it's a wrong method, and it's a wrong attitude. You're covering up, and you're in the corner and against the ropes. Now that left hook didn't hurt you, nor did that. Why just stay back covered? Like I told you, I was a little tired. And this is a hard, long fight. It's easy to sit out here and talk. And my legs didn't, wasn't in the shape it should have been in. I was off three and a half years. It's a miracle for any man. Anybody who knows boxing tells it's a miracle. I just got hit right there. Anybody will tell you it's a miracle for me to even come back. Your knees buckle left. Yeah, he tagged me right there. Now, right now, I'm on what we call Queer Street. I'm a little numb. I realize I'm in a fight. I hear the crowd. I'm a little dazed, no physical pain, just a numb dream feeling like, a dopey feeling. I know I'm unconscious and uh, halfway, and I know if he hit me a couple more times, he might finish me. But I'm holding on, I'm keeping my distance, I'm making him come after me, I'm making him miss punches, and ever so often he tags me. I put a little emphasis on playing drunk here, you'll see. Somewhere along here, I walked back wobbly, as if to say, well, I'm really hurt, hoping that he would not come in. Right here, here you go. And that's just acting right there. And the round ends. Round 12. Round 12. Ali against Frazier. March 8th, 1971. Ali is still here in the studio with me. Joe Frazier has gone. As a result of the altercation, the extremely sensitive situation that you witnessed earlier. Now, having taken those punches from Joe in the 11th <coughs> round and having survived, did you feel especially fatigued at this point? I'm not fatigued. I'm recuperating a little, Howard, but I realize that I haven't recuperated 100%, and a good shot can get me back in that same condition. There it is right there. He tagged me with a real good one, and right now I'm a little stunned, a little pins and needle feeling. I'm not hurt, but I'm stunned. And I can concentrate, but not 100% effectively. So what I'm doing is keeping my distance, taking punches when I can see them, and uh, staying close to them, tying them up, because every second that goes by, you, your mind becomes clear. And this is why fighters try to knock fighters out within 15 or 20 seconds of the time that they really hit him, because that's when he's most vulnerable. But if a man can go 20 seconds, he's out of that thing. should be much different Monday night. Much, much different. I'm in much better shape now than I am on that film, though. Attitude to be serious. And this is uh, 
the Joe Frazier you just saw on the show, he's not the same Joe Frazier you see on the film. Now. He knows it. That's why he got upset. And he couldn't take what was being said. He didn't say what he wanted about me. He called me a name that he didn't know I don't like. But I don't get mad and jump up and want to beat him up and be serious. I might pretend I'm serious, but I've never really got angry at him. I'm not angry now. He's just not cool. Well, that may be. I'm sure that Joe's under an emotional strain in anticipation of Monday night, and I'm sure that you are, too. Yes, you're, but I'm not going to be... You're built differently. I'm not going to be ignorant. Well, that's what you've charged him with being, and that's what he reacts. And that's the way you act sometimes, too. Don't be bitter, Muhammad. If you don't like it, you can jump up. <laughs> Many times you act ignorant, and people say it all the time. You might not be ignorant, but you act ignorant. If I do, you've got a scoop. 15 seconds left in round 12. You feel he had the better of this round? I really don't know. It don't make no difference. It's all over. It's history. I'm going to straighten it out Monday. I don't care who won. I don't care what you think. Round 13. Raise your Ali. Well, you do look like you've gotten your full capacity. That was three years ago, Howard. I've had 133 round, two rounds of boxing since then. If you look at the films of the Norton fight three years later, I look like I was 10 years younger than this scene right here. And uh, I'm better now than I was when I fought Ken Norton. I can dance uh, for at least 20 rounds if I had to now. I'll be wearing about 210, which is two pounds lighter than I did when I fought Sonny Liston some uh, 10 years ago. This man is easy to hit, but my mistake was not keeping up my leg work and clowning. But I'd like to say again while we're on the air, Howard, I'm not angry at Joe Frazier. Uh, my mind is a little too uh, big to be angry at one man. He's a man doing his job, and I'm going to do my job, and after the fight, one day my children and his children might play together after we all shake hands and say all the publicity and the fighting is over. But when that bell rang, we would be out to get each other. There will be no playing, no pulling punches, and it will be serious just like you're watching right now. These punches are real. His eyes were closed, my jaw was swollen, the blood was real, and the fight's gonna be real Monday. But I wanna say I have no malice and nothing, hatred against Joe Frazier. He's a black man, a brother of mine, but we both have our job and we're gonna do it. And I'm just sorry, he's not cool enough to be here with us to finish out this show and can really get that angry and serious and want a street fight over something like what I might say when I don't even think about what he say. I look at it as a joke. We are both dead tired here. Yeah, you would be too. Anybody would be. And all those human beings in the audience would be dead tired if they just took this exchange you see right there. They'd be dead here. Joe's right hand was not an effective force, was it? No, it's left hook. All Joe's got is a left hook. It's like a robot. You'll never see Joe back up two feet with rhythm. You'll never see him shoot a, a, a right cross or a left jab, two or three jabs, and follow with a combination. He's just a little brute that can just stand there and can keep taking it and keep throwing it, and he'll take every punch just to hit you once. And these type fighters don't last too long. I'm 32 and he's 30, and I am about uh, six years younger than him physically because my head haven't been bashed as much as his. Coming up to the end of round 13, there it is. Thank you, Bob, and a reminder that we'll be on hand live tomorrow from the Felt Forum in Madison Square Garden for the Muhammad Ali Joe Frazier weigh-in. That'll be at 3.30 Eastern Time, 2.30 Central Time, 4 Pacific Time over most of these ABC stations. You are, of course, looking at 14th round action between Ali and Frazier, March 8, 1971. Scoring up to this point, 6-6-1 by the referee, 8-5 by one judge, 10-3 by another Frazier. A 
Martha McCanny is the referee separate. Two fighters who've been at each other for 13 previous rounds are showing signs of fatigue, thus the holding that you're witnessing. Less than a minute to go, and this the 14th win. seconds left to go in the round. Just hit him 12 times. How did you didn't say that? You just look at him. Want the viewers to see. It. Yeah. I know you ain't going to say nothing the next round when I get hit. All right, Muhammad, you came back in that 14th round. You're right. You did hit him again and again and again, and you won that round. I lost the judgment. 15th because I got knocked down. But remember, at the end of the 14th, the tension in the garden, it must have infected both you and Frazier, knowing the 15th round coming up. You both believing the fight was close, the championship at stake, a classic fight. You recollect it? Yes. We both believed it was close. It could have been a draw or whatever, but it's always good, as they say, the star closes the show. It's always good to end up winning the last round, which I know I didn't do this time. Okay, round 15 as we look at it. You see, there I am. No time for count. But when you're real great in the ring, it's bad to get knocked down, so this has made a big thing. As I said earlier, Howard, the main thing is to recuperate and not to go down again, to be able to end up fighting, which I did. He just tagged me again, the Howard. But that's the sign of experience. I've been down once with Henry Cooper, Sonny Banks, Alan Hudson in the Olympics, Doug Jones also knocked me down. Sonny Liston really shook me. So this is not my first time in being hit hard. I'm feeling this numb feeling. Did you sense then, after the knockdown, that it would cost you the round and that it I might knew, cost you the fight? I knew it would cost me the round. I wasn't too much worried about the fight, but I knew it would cost because I knew I won these nine rounds. And, I didn't think it would cost me the fight, but I figured it would cost me the, uh, I knew it would cost me the round. But I'm still throwing, still taking. Now I should be moving, Howard. I'm standing there on the ropes because I'm fatigued and I'm actually, 
You want to sit, go somewhere and sit down right now. I'm so tired, but I got to keep pushing. It's incredible that he could still keep going. His face is all blown up. Not only keep going, it's incredible he could take such a pound in him. He's taking him right this minute. Right now he's taking him. Those are landing. Those are landing. Every once in a while he'll land the hook. And I landed about five punches this hook. Even after the knockdown, I did this. All these are landing. Was your jaw giving you pain then? No pain at all, just really. Nothing fractured, nothing broke. That's why I went to the hospital to check. 20 seconds left to go in the fight. He's holding the ropes, so he don't want to let go of the ropes. He wants to keep him in the corner because he's not a boxer. He can't fight me from the center of the ring, so he holds him in the corner. But this time, he's going to have to box. He's going to have to move because I'm going to be dancing. I'm back now. Been active three years. I'm ready now. We're going to dance. Make him eat all of those words he said on this TV show today. The legend of Joe Frazier will soon be finished. All right, let's take a look at this again, Muhammad, because it's a rare thing for you. Solid left hook. Okay, here's the decision. McCanty scores it eight, six, one even for Frazier. Adi Idala, nine to six for Frazier. Bill wrecked 11 rounds for Frazier, four rally, one even, 11 and four. They win it by unanimous decision and still. All right, we got 30 seconds left. Quickly. This right hand that's caused all the talk. How is it? Well, it gives me a lot of trouble. It gave me trouble in the Norton fight, gave me trouble in the fight in Indonesia, couldn't hardly use it, and it's been hurting in training. The doctors x-rayed it. They say it's all right, but the pain they can't see. And sometimes, just that I feel, and I'll just be doing my best. I'll be using my left mostly. Good luck to you. Once again, we want to express our regret at the fact that Joe Frazier left the studio. He felt he had every right to do so. We're sorry about the difficult situation that occurred and the slight skirmish that But occurred. no hard feelings. We'll be buddies after I beat him. Okay. That's our show today. We'll be Thank good brothers. Thank you very much. Good black brothers. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arledge. Today's show produced by Dennis Lewin, who's also our production coordinator, directed by Lou Volpicelli. Fight film produced and directed by Bill Greaves, program administrator of ABC's Wide World of Sports is John Martin. Associate directors, Lou Frederick and Carol Letty. Technical director, Ralph Drucker. Stay tuned now for the Andy Williams San Diego Open Golf Tournament, which follows immediately over most most of these ABC stations, except on the West Coast. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the friendly skies of your land. Today's program was pre-recorded. And was certainly a superb fighter when he held the championship, is Joe Frazier, towelled in Swami fashion. Remember how Joe Lewis used to train and then come down to talk to writers in Pumpton Lakes, New Jersey with the towel over his head in that same way? Sonny Liston, too, for that matter. That's Joe Frazier. They spent a lot of time taping Joe's ankles in the dressing room. You're looking at Ali again and Joe. Joe, of course, terribly grim man where Ali is concerned. It showed in his preparation in the last fight and again in this one. That skirmish those weeks ago that you read so much about, that was real as far as Joe Frazier was concerned. He feels that through the years, Ali has given him needless verbal abuse. And a prideful man Joe Frazier is, he never did take to it kindly. You're looking back in Ali, and 
as we await the introduction of the fighters quickly let me cover the rules for you we will of course have the mandatory eight count three knockdowns within a round the fight is over this is not a championship fight it's a scheduled 12 rounder they have not waived the three knockdown rule there will be no saving by the bell scoring will be on a per round system with a supplemental point system in the event of a tie based upon the round scoring. The referee will be a relatively young man, Tony Perez. He is, I think, an outstanding referee. In his first very big fight, Ellis Frazier, which this reporter worked, Perez showed an absolute ability to command the fighters. You're looking at young Tony now. Always maintaining what a referee must maintain above all else perfect position to see that no undue harm is done that no low blows go unheeded and all of the rest Perez has the youth the swiftness the know-how and the strength to execute his job the judges two veteran judges Tony Castellano and Jack Gordon now the ring announcer Joe Boston this is the headline event on this evening's boxing program from Madison Square Garden in New York the distance is 12 rounds. The principles in this headline event for the evening coming from Philadelphia at what 209 pounds even. He's wearing white trunks, former world's heavyweight champion, Smokin' Joe Frazier. The introduction of Joe, who now gets a chorus of cheers with an admixture of vocal disapproval. And Louisville, Kentucky, at 212 pounds. He's, he's wearing white trucks also. Wearing white trunks. Former world's heavyweight champion, also Mr. Muhammad Ali. We'll be back for the start of the fight in a moment. Bell for round one, the action begins. Frazier's task to stay all over Ali. Don't give Ali jabbing room. Ali's task to stay away. Use his most effective blow, the left jab. If there's any punch in Ali left, it would be in the left hook. The right hand, as you all know, is suspect. It's been damaged again and again and again. And there is an apparent bursitis between the knuckles. At the same time, as Frazier follows Ali, he must be careful not to do what he did in the first fight. Move the right foot ahead of the left. He must angle his approach as he's doing now. Lagging the right leg to give Ali only a slanting shot at the Frazier face. Watch these things closely as the fight develops. Stop on a dime. Stop on a dime. pulling the shuffle in the first round and he said he'd be doing no clowning. Ali dancing, circling in the main steadily to the left and using the left jab whenever he can. Stop on a dime. Look at Joe. He is lagging the right leg, which is a change of style for him. That enables him to cut off the ring on, the, on Ali. You're looking good, baby. Huh. Between the elbows. Between the elbows. Ali has also said in his pre-fight propaganda that he will not allow himself to languish against the ropes as he did in the first fight. We have a minute to go in round one.
Joe working on the body and getting in a left to the body directly above us. Ali with two quick ones to the head, the left and the right in combination, and another left. On a down count. Between the elbows. Note that the continual pursuer is Frazier, which was the case in the first fight. Ali again with a quick combination. It was a right lead and then the left. So he did use the right. Ten seconds left in the round. The bell for round two. Both fighters in white trunks. You know them each. You don't need any more identification, though, for any neophytes who might be watching, as Frazier comes right at Ali, trying to do damage immediately. Ali's black trim goes up to the black belt. Holly using that left jab as he did in the first fight. The very tactic Frazier had to be sure to expect. You got the stick to keep the distance. The crowd yells when Joe lands a left hook and he got in a good one to the belly. Crowd remembers the damage Frazier did in the last fight with that left hook. Hitting Muhammad often to the stomach and wearing him down. Ali has been dancing throughout this fight on his toes steadily. Dancing is one thing. Movement is another. You can't dance for 12 or 15 rounds as Ali says. There's no way. Clever movement is what you need. Covering up while Joe flails away, and Ali got in a good right to the head. But the crowd is now, at least those around us, calling for Joe because he continues to pursue and to be the aggressor in the battle. We've got a minute left to go in round two. It's round two. Come on, Joe! Referee Perez separates the fighters. Ali continues to move, as you can see. Joe coming at him. Much the same as in the early rounds of the first fight. And that was a good right. Joe was staggered there. Joe's backing off for the first time in the fight. He was hurt by that right of Ali's. Referee Tony Perez separates the fight. It calls for the end of the round, but I didn't hear a bell. Bertie Pacheco takes out Muhammad Ali's mouthpiece, and now referee Perez calls them back to finish the round. A confusing incident, but that's the way it is. The bell for round two. As you can see, Ali without his mouthpiece. He got in a good right near the end of that round, just before Tony Perez made the mistake. Now in slow motion, watch in the early part of the round, Frazier connect with a real good left, and Ali will follow with a good right. Watch closely. There's the left. Now, Ali right back with the right as Frazier dropped his left after delivering. Now this is close to the end of the round. And watch for the right that I talked about that backed Frazier off and indeed staggered. Ali sets it up with the two left jabs, and there's the right connecting cleanly. Now watch closely. Joe Frazier backing off for the first time in the fight. He was hurt, no question about it. No, it's not for the heavyweight championship of the world, but as I said at the top of the show, curiously, some of the magic of the first fight is here. 
in this crowd, in its anticipation, and I'm sure all over the country. Quickly, Joe came at Ali, who's in his own corner, and they're flailing away, and just as quickly, Ali scored with a left and a right and a left to the head. How much can Frazier take? Will Ali be able to render the punishment that he did the last time, even though he lost? Since that time, Joe took tremendous punishment. Six knockdowns from George Foreman and had trouble even with Joe Buckner over in London. But how much can Ali punch? How much can he hurt at this stage of his career? Little less than two minutes left in round three. I'll tell you this, in the first fight, Ali was waving in disdain at Frazier, and he was clowning. He's living up to this point, apart from the quick evidence of the Ali shuffle, by his promise not to clown. The roar from the crowd as Joe connected with only a glancing, a grazing left against Ali's jaw. And such is the nature of Joe's power in that left hook that the crowd will roar every time he throws it. Get off of it, Ruth. Frazier smiling momentarily in the middle of the ring. A minute left in round three. That's Joe's way of showing his disdain for Ali's absence of punching power as Joe views it. Hear the crowd yell when Joe threw that left, which missed. I must say, up to this point, Ali has been a master at stopping Joe's left with his gloves. Joe, Joe again taking the Ali jab. Ten seconds left in the third round. We'll be going back to round four in just a second, but we have some college basketball scores for you now. In an upset, Cincinnati beat Marquette 92-77. to South Carolina defeated Houston 104-86, and Pittsburgh beat West Virginia 83-78. to Getting back to the fight, you know, keeping the official scoring that night was uh, Judge Tony Castellano, uh, Judge Jack Gordon, and referee Tony Perez. Uh, at this stage in the fight after three rounds, Judge Castellano had Ali ahead 3-0. Judge Gordon had Ali ahead 2-1, and Perez, referee Perez, had Ali 2-1. All three had Ali winning the first two rounds. Now, let's go back to my man Howard for round four. Round four is underway. Drew Brown Bundini is screaming all night long. Clearly at the moment, at the moment, Ali is dominant. He's scoring with his left, and he's throwing the right more than one might have expected and frequently landing. Wait for that trumpet top. Go back dancing. Keep dancing. Keep dancing. Don't get on you. Box back in time. This, of course, is a scheduled 12 round. 20,748 people have paid a gross of $1,053,688 here at Madison Square Garden tonight. Two minutes left in the fourth round. Those figures just a reflection of the national interest in this bout.
You're going to hear Drew Brown Bundini behind me all night. Frazier trying to strike at Ali while in the corner, but the blows picked off by Ali's gloves. Ali using the jab effectively. Still dancing. Remember, he danced, as he puts it, for the first four rounds of the first fight. Always on his toes. Minute left in round four. It's too early to tell, but one does have to at least conjure with the notion that Ali is indeed in much better shape than he was for their first match. And up to this point, he certainly looks better than he did in either match against Norton and against Rudy Lubers in Indonesia. Rudy Lubers, you remember him. A little Dutch heavyweight whom Ali never even threw a right at. The end of the round, back in a moment. You're looking at Joe Frazier's corner. Manager Eddie Futch working over him. The only visible damage to Frazier at this point is lodged in the right eye, which is definitely bloodshot. It's, there's been no discernible trickle of blood from the corner of the eye, but it's been the recipient of a goodly number of Ali lefts up to this point. Again, as you see Ali, he's not even sitting down in his corner. Well, he used that tactic against Norton in the second fight. I'm not sure that's Drew Brown Bundini next to him that it's the wisest thing in the world, but it is an evidence of confidence if the adversary takes it seriously. Round five is underway. Tony Perez is the referee. Then Joe scored. He scored with two quick ones to the stomach, the chest, and then a third to the right cheek of Ali. Frazier looked good in that last exchange in the corner. You heard the roar of the crowd, and if you remember the first fight, clearly Frazier started to come on strongly in the fifth round. That was a 15-rounder. This is only a 12-rounder. Watch and see if Ali drops that right after he throws it. Because Frazier took great advantage of that in the first fight with his left hook. Frazier contends that Ali cannot keep his hands up except when he's against the ropes. A minute 30 in the fifth round, a minute 30 left. You don't want to draw judgments too quickly, but it does seem that Ali is back against the ropes more in this round than he has been in the prior ones. You don't see the movement in Ali in this round to the same degree that you saw in the prior four. Less than a minute to go in round five. And there's Ali wrestling against the ropes. Okay, champ. Okay, champ. All night long it's gonna be like that. Less than 30 seconds in round five. All night long. 
Less than 10 seconds. The countdown in round five. There it is. And now the bell for round six. The action begins. Ali with a flurry, only some of which got through Frazier's gloves. He threw about six punches. Three perhaps got through. Joe landed a left tuck, but in the interim, Ali landed two lefts and a right. Joe's been talking to Ali, and Ali, in the meantime, got in a good left and a good right. Joe was actually taunting Ali, and then got belted. Maybe if no greater action happens in this round, we'll have a look between rounds at that left and right. Because at the moment, Joe, who's taking left after left now, was saying, you can't hurt me. In that effect, you got no punch. But Ali, with a minute 30 left in round six, has scored repeatedly with lefts and rights up to this point in the round. Minute left in round six. Thus far, a very effective round for Ali. Unlike round six in the first fight, when clearly he was beginning to run downhill. Although he did come back in the ninth and tenth in that fight. Thirty seconds left in the round. A very good round up to this point for Ali. Less than ten seconds to go in the round. in slow-mo let's look at that Ali left and right now watch Frazier coming at him there's the left there's the right perfect combination one has to wonder about Ali's punch the boxing skill seems to be there up to this point tonight one has to wonder what would happen to Frazier if those punchers were Foreman or Frazier type punches. He's getting instructions from Eddie Futch. Now he's getting the jelly over each eye. Actually, Joe's eyes aren't as puffy at this point as they were in the first fight. Just that bloodshotness in the right eye and maybe that slight cut. Round seven of a scheduled 12 round. Joe scoring with a left and the crowd responding to it. They expect dynamite out of every left hook that Frazier scores with. Joe again with a left hook and scoring. Showing Joe forcing Ali into Ali's corner.
positions, but the crowd now responsive to Frazier's left hook, sensing many of them, and sensing perhaps some, perhaps many, that Joe is beginning to come on, knowing of his knockout ability. Moving down to the midsection to weaken Ali and get him to drop his guard. Ali is being told don't do that by Drew Brown Bundini. He could mean any one of several things. Don't hold, don't stay in the corner. Or he could mean don't wink at the press as Ali did just a few seconds ago. Referee Perez breaking them up. Ali trying to keep distance now and use his weapon the left. George Foreman it was who said Ali after landing combination should move in and hold to avoid Frazier's counter punching. Frazier has always been the kind of fighter who likes to let you swing at him and then come back with his blow. And so you saw Ali after that other combination come in and hold, which is a sensible thing to do. Frazier continues to talk to Ali from time to time in the fight. It's round seven with 30 seconds left. Perez warning Ali on hitting on the break. Ali still using the left. We'll go back for round eight in just a second. But you know, during the uh, Superstars competition, we had a little break in the action, and all the guys got together, and we played a little round of Simon Says. Now, ABC had planned to show you that today. Instead, we're going to show it to you tomorrow during the Superstars show. Uh, you know, in round seven, that was the first time Smoking Joe Frazier had won a round on all three judges' cards. One judge had him now 4-2-1 uh, Ali. Another judge had it 5-2 Ali. And referee Perez had it 4-2-1 Ali. Now let's go back to Howard for round eight. There's the bell for round eight in this fight. Frazier appeared to be coming on strongly in round seven with that early left hook attack that scored. Now Joe is really trying to put it to Ali. Ali ducking that left hook. Crowd is now solidly roaring every time Frazier throws a punch. Fatigue. He saw Joe talking to him then and taunting him and scoring with the left hook. And Ali's right seems to be carried much lower than in the early going. Ali complaining to Perez. I know not what about. Ali holding much more in this round. Slowed up, I think, manifestly. That left hook by Joe caught Ali's glove. I must say that in this round, uh, at least, Ali has really slowed down. Yeah. 
You don't see anything like the movement now laying this round that you saw in the early rounds. Frazier trying to swarm all over him and score. But Joe not doing that well either in perfect Kanda. Quick combination by Ali and another left and another left and a right. Suddenly a flurry scored by Ali. One tactic the Ali camp wanted was for Ali to finish each round strong. Frazier did that in the last fight, and it was an effective tactic with the judges. A right by Frazier as the bell rings for the end of round eight. Watch this right. There it is, and the right is not usually an effective Frazier weapon. All right, Angelo Dundee working on Muhammad Ali, sitting in his corner. Frazier is dancing around, laughing, taunting Ali. It's Frazier who's waving, come at me. It's Frazier who's showing all the confidence in the world. Confidence that he believes he's in utter command in this fight. Going at Ali, who's against the ropes. Quite a different picture from the first couple of rounds of the fight. It'll be no contest, Ali said. A professional against an amateur. A good flurry in there. The fighter's going at it. Crowd yelled at that left, but clearly it missed. doing better in this round that up to this point that seems clear Joe threw a right that grazed Ali's shoulder there is blood coming out of Ali's right nostril just a touch of it but there it is a minute 30 left in round nine remember this one's only a 12 round That blood must have been occasioned by the right that Frazier landed in the last round because his nose looked a little red, Ali's did, as he came out for the ninth round, and the blood has reappeared. A minute left in round nine. Frazier's taunting of Ali, I must say, thus far, Ali has dominated this round. Okay. Okay. Ali landed six, seven punches in a row there. Continued fighting just after it, but that had to be a good round for Ali, as you saw with your own eyes. We'll be getting back for the 10th round in just a second, but we have some more highlights from the world of sports. In college basketball, Providence defeated St. John's 85-67. to Notre Dame beat Villanova 115-85. Ohio State defeated Indiana 85-77. to And North Carolina beat Duke. 96 to 92 in the National Hockey League the Boston Bruins 4 the Detroit Red Wings 4 Philadelphia beat Buffalo 4 to 2 
In track and field, we reported earlier that the Russians defeated the USA in track and field in Moscow, 158 to 124. Well, the event was marred by a display of apparent bad temper by a young female American trackster, Miss Mary Decker. You know, Mary Decker has been setting all kind of records in indoor track and field this year. And in the race she threw, in a relay race, she threw her baton at a Russian opponent. It, it, she felt that a Russian opponent elbowed her on the curve. Well, in any event, both teams were disqualified, and I guess we'll read a little more about that tomorrow. Uh, in the eighth round, just like the seventh round, Joe Frazier had won on all three cards. So I guess that waving in the beginning of the ninth round, Joe felt that the tide had turned. Well, Muhammad Ali fought back. He won the ninth round on all three cards. And at this point, one judge had Ali ahead 5-3-1. Another judge had Ali ahead 6-3. And um, referee Perez had Ali ahead 5-3-1. Well, now let's go back for the 10th round. The bell for round 10, just three rounds left. <laughs> left to the chin by Frazier. That brought the roar from the crowd, which at this point Seems to be favoring Joe, if one can judge by the cheers as the blows are thrown. Go back up, Beatle! Go back up! Hey, Jack, take your turn! You remember? Beatle, baby, halfway! After the scoring in the last fight, where Judge Bill Reck gave Frazier 11 rounds to just four for Ali, one hesitates to conjecture on how they're scoring. Ali, by the way, has a right blood mark on his right cheek, the upper right cheek under the eye. Under the eye can cause him no problem. If it starts to bleed, being under the eye, it cannot flow into the eye. As I look at some of the ringside scoring around made by members of the press entirely unofficial, they make it a very close contest up to this point. In other words, this fight is up for grabs. Joe got in a good left to the belly. Ali against the ropes for the last 20 seconds. A minute left in round 10. crowd screamed that left was off Ali's glove. He picked that blow off. Less than 10 seconds, and this the 10th round. We await the bell for round 11. One writer at ringside just said he's got Ali well ahead. Said he can lose unless he gets knocked out. Larry Merchant of the New York Post. But Larry Merchant's score had Ali the winner of the last fight, and he was the loser by unanimous decision. You just can't tell how the judges and the referee are scoring this fight. Based upon blows landed, well, I would think that clearly Ali has landed more blows.
just as he did there in a flurry with Joe's head always a target. Less than two minutes to go in round 11. Ali is certainly landing again and again and again in this round. Under New York boxing rules, of course, this fight could be called a draw. If the referee and judges saw it that way. to go in round 11 and you hear Angelo Dundee perhaps behind me yelling stay there stay there when Ali was in ring center and scoring hear him saying stay there baby stay there Seconds, a little less now left in the 11th round. One round after this one. Ten seconds left in the round. Ali continuing the score with that jab. Left jab, left jab all night. The end of the round. You know, going into the final round, it was obvious Ali could not lose, except by a Frazier knockout. The judges had Ali ahead, 6-4-1 and 8-3, and, and referee Perez had it Ali 6-4-1. Now let's go back to Madison Square Garden and hear what Howard Cosell has to say. You're looking at Muhammad Ali, of course, Drew Brown, Bundini next to him, still exhorting him on. The fight is touch gloves. The referee, Tony Perez, backs off. Frazier swinging wildly, hard, wanting desperately to do damage here. And real damage, a knockout if possible. But he's got to connect. Ali again landing a couple of punches in there. And one thing about Muhammad Ali that I don't think has ever been duly publicized. This man can take a punch. They never talk about that. He's been knocked down and he gets up and he can take a punch. You got to close the show, Pat. I've not closed the show. This is the 12th and final round. Looking back on this fight now, while the crowd has had the interest in it that I've described, now I think there's a realization among everybody that this was a 12-round bout between two past champions that was lacking much of the excitement of the prior fight. It's been a boxing contest on Ali's part, and he has scored often with his jab and often in combinations but quite clearly without power because he hasn't reddened Ali's face and eyes the way he did in the first fight. And Frazier has shown nothing of what he showed in the first fight. Only a minute left in the fight. And Ali is on his toes. Crowd beginning to scream as they realize the countdown continues toward the end of the fight. And perhaps still looking for the one big blow from Joe Frazier that has not manifested itself all night. Ali still raining blows on Frazier's head. Go, 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 go
fight approaches its end. Nine seconds, eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds. Ali having scored with a left and a right holding on. The fight is about to end and it is over. It went the distance. Joe Frazier talking to Ali during the course of the fight, looking at him laughingly, even scornfully. And apparently from his demeanor, Joe Frazier thinks that he has won the decision. But in Ali's corner, well, they're confident that they've won the decision. We'll find out when we come back in just a moment. We're in the ring where absolute bedlam prevails, still awaiting the decision which is about to come up now from ring announcer Joe Boston. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? Please. Here is your decision. The winner by unanimous decision is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali has won the fight on a unanimous decision. Well, Joe, I don't think you have to apologize to anybody for the way you fought tonight. I don't think that was that far off. You know what I mean? I would say I fought. I throw more effective punch anyway. So I, I got no argument about nothing. Joe, I do have to ask this question, and you understand what oh, there's me a melee in the ring. What happens now, Joe? Well, Inevitably, the relax for a while. Take it, then we can decide. What do you we want do. to fight more, Joe? I would like to fight again. So we have a chance to discuss it here. Okay, Joe, I'm not going to bother you anymore at this moment. Good luck to you. Now, Angelo Dundee, the trainer of Muhammad Ali, will be talking with Muhammad in a moment. Well, my man fought a really strategic fight, was in great shape, was able to offset him. He won the fight. I mean, there was no baloney tonight. I thought he won the first one. So I don't know how they can make any baloney about this fight. He won it, Howard. Did he fight the fight as you two had planned? He just aired a couple times. One time he got against the ropes. He started kidding around with the fans. I didn't want that. It was all serious tonight. That's what I wanted. Seriousness in great shape. Okay, what next? You really want Foreman? Oh, sure, he wants Foreman. Anytime Foreman wants him. He's not looking for Foreman. Foreman's got to be looking for him. He's the, he's the man. Look at this house tonight. All right, can you get him over here, please? All right, we're going to get Muhammad Ali over here as quickly as we can. Give us some protection, please. Back up. Got it. Give us some protection, please. First of all, Muhammad. First of all, as I look for a camera which can't get in here, oh, they hear us. we'll use sound. That's right. Just sound. Congratulations on the victory. I should got my dear late camp hour. Oh, buddy, God, all our blessing to come through. Hope to go on to get to a title and then get on out of this. I perform good, but it's hard.